welcome to my channel my name is Janae or Miss Maul I am going into my sixth year of teaching I'm a primary teacher so I taught second grade for three years and then I'm about to be teaching kindergarten for three years so today's video as you can see from the title I'm going to be talking about my favorite products and resources that I use to teach reading and phonics and all things literacy. Um, these products that I'm gonna mention in this video have worked wonders for my classroom. I also just wanna put a disclaimer out there that I also believe it's about um, the training of the teacher and the teacher's skill. I believe that a skilled teacher can take any curriculum, any resource, and maximize it and you know get great results from it so i just want to say that without further ado let's get started so first of all literacy or reading encompasses a lot of different categories so you've got phonological awareness which is just being aware of the um, individual phonemes and words and being able to manipulate sound and then there's phonics which is the actual you know, matching the graphemes to the phonemes and all of that. And then you have um, actually reading and de uh, decoding and high frequency words and vocabulary and all of that. So I'm going to try to start from the ground up. So let's start with the basis of um, early literacy education, which is phonological awareness. Um, last year and years prior, I was using a resource that I had access to from a yearly subscription that I talked about on this channel. Um, it's called My Guided Readers and it's from Anna DeGilio, Simply Skilled in Second. Um, but I think she doesn't go by that anymore. I think it's just Anna DeGilio because she's like branched off and started her own company now. Um, so yeah, but I was using a product from her website, which worked really well. But I'm switching the resource that I use this year to a more well-known and popular resource. Although I've been studying this one and just kind of making some comparisons to what I've been using. But anyway, um, so yeah, I brought I brought up my prior one that I was using because I actually, I liked how in depth it went for each category of phonological awareness. So, you know, phonological awareness entails rhyming, um, beginning initial sounds, middle sounds, isolating final sounds, switching out sounds, and you know, um, you know, what else? Breaking sounds apart, saying individual sounds, and blending those sounds together, uh, things of that sort. So with Anna's resource that I was using, each day focuses on a particular category. So Mondays were dedicated to rhyming and we would either do onset and rhyme and then tell me thumbs up, thumbs down, do the words rhyme and then come up with your own rhyme. Um, and then uh, Tuesdays were like uh, initial phoneme or was it? I think it was um, syllables. Yes, Tuesdays were dedicated to syllables. So breaking words into their syllables or me saying syllables and then the students blending. And, you know, just it, there were like three to four activities for each category. So each day focused on one particular skill, which I think was effective. It definitely worked. Now, the resource that I am using this year, and I guess... Um, I guess I could say I'm, I rec I'm recommending it because I also like this resource too. I have been using it for my um, online tutoring and I'm excited to use it in the classroom. I've kind of just flipped through the whole book, but this is Hegarty Phonemic Awareness. Um, I'm excited to use this. The reason why I like Hegarty is because I like that each day it focuses on all the different categories of phonological awareness. Whereas the resource I was using prior, like I said, each day focused on one particular skill, which is effective. I, I just wanna be clear, it's all up to teacher preference. I think that's, I think my students saw a lot of growth with that too, but I like how this um, hits all of the skills every single day. I think this is even, this is going to be even more effective with my students. Um, so yeah, 
it starts off, you know, with rhyme, um, yeah, rhyme, yeah, rhyme recognition, and then they do initial phoneme and then blending syllables, uh, isolating the ending phoneme, which is tricky. I know some, like the prior resource I used, they didn't get in. Oh, they, I think they did do, do final phonemes, but that was like dedicated to Fridays. Yeah, on Fridays, we focused on final phonemes, but I know that can be really tricky, especially for kindergartners. Isolating that last sound is kind of tricky for some of them. Um, so yeah, I like that they get to practice that every single day instead of having to just wait till one specific day to practice that. Um, so yeah, basically that's what I love about the Hegarty is that they get practice in all the different categories. So I, I definitely am a firm believer in carving out time for phonemic awareness, especially for kindergarten, definitely in first grade and, and even in second. Um, you might not have to spend as much time in second, even though I don't think it would hurt them. But phonemic awareness, very important. Although it's all auditory um, and teacher facilitated, it's extremely important and you should dedicate the time necessary to teaching it. So next. Um, next, uh, my favorite, favorite, favorite new thing that I'm so happy to have discovered. I think all literacy early education teachers should discover this. I think this should be implemented in all schools and teachers need to get trainings on these are the secret stories. Now I'm just gonna flash you really quick because these images are copyrighted, but look at these beautiful posters. Look at these beautiful posters. Um, and then I also have the little mini cards also. These are the same thing as the posters, just in mini versions and the stories are on the back. So you can take a look at these too. Um, these are fantastic. So how do I explain secret stories? They are stories about all of the different phonics skills. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick one that they kind of already publicized. Uh, give me one second. I should have had this ready. Okay, I'm gonna do one of the vowels. Oh, no, you know, I'm gonna do one that I teach at the beginning of the year, which is A U and A W, and you can find this online too. So, like, for example, it's teaching, it's giving a story for the phonic skills and, and, the, and why they make the sounds that they make, which makes kids remember it more because it's like, it's like a social emotional type of thing. It's not like a phonic skill. It's like a fun story and they remember it. And then also with the visual that helps even more. Um, and basically what it allows teachers to do is it allows teachers to teach all the different phonic skills that they probably wouldn't reach until second grade, like AU and AW. When the child enters kindergarten, this uh, is not on the list of things to learn at all. Like this isn't even in our kindergarten curriculum, but with the secret stories, you can teach them this and they got it forever. So now they have the keys that they need to attack any word because they have access to the whole code. They don't have to wait until second grade to learn about OI and OY. They don't have to wait until first grade to learn that uh, when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking, right? We, I, we can, because, because it's a story, you can teach them a story a day. You're not expecting everybody to master it, but the kids who are going to get it, they, at least they have access to it. So now when they're reading books or they see stuff, they can see words, they can say, oh, I see a secret, you know, or they, 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 they at least have the keys to try to decode something rather than you know you know that's why kids sometimes give up on reading because sometimes they're, they're trying to read something with only the knowledge that they have which in kindergarten what knowledge do they have just the simple sounds that the letters make right so if you're trying to read the word august right and your teacher told you that a says a and you says uh 
when you sound out the word, it doesn't say August. It says August, August, right? And you're trying to make sense of the world. And you're like, you know what? I just give up on this reading thing because y'all y'all tell me this. Then I try to sound it out. But then it's that. <laughs> so give kids access to the whole code and do it in an easy and fun way. You will be shocked how much they retain and absorb just by making things fun. Um so anyway, you post the posters up in your classroom. Uh, the, the creator, Katie Garner, she suggests teaching a story a day until you've taught them all. Don't worry about, oh, I, I can't teach this until I teach that. Because it's a story, it doesn't, ha it, 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 they need to know it. They need to know that TNH says, right? Regardless of if they've learned that T says t and H says, of course, you're going to teach that, but you don't have to hold that secret back from them because you feel like they need to know this before they know that. They need all of it, right? Um, and and my, my teacher brain was like that too. I was like, no, I can't expose them to this because that's going to confuse them. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't because they learn Oh, T and H, it has to be when T and H sit by each, they can't, they're not supposed to sit by each other because every time they do, where is it at? They stick out their tongues and they tease each other and they go like this, right? And the kids, oh, they remember that. And then they see that. So now when they're reading the words and that's, they see that T and H, they might initially go, T, but then you can just quickly do you see a secret? Oh, yeah. And then they look at the posters in your room. T and H. They stick their tongues out each other because they bad. They're not supposed to sit by each other. And they go, oh, so sound out that word. At, at, that. You will be shocked. You will be shocked. Um. So, highly recommend it. I might even link some of Katie Garner's videos down below in the description just so she can explain it. It makes so much sense when you hear her explain it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to link some videos from her explaining it and the website um, so you guys can implement it. I'm, oh, I highly recommend it for kindergarten teachers. There's no particular scope and sequence. It's not a curriculum. It's just a resource to enhance your instruction. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna link those videos below. But anyway, I got the class size and they have different colors too. Like I got the the bright neon colors because that's my classroom thing. I know they have them in red and then they also have them in like a pastel color. Um, so kind of like these, but like the pastel version. And then I think they, uh, I think they just released a new one. It's like neutral. Yeah, no, I think they they had they already had the neutral colors like the soft brown and the tan, um, and then I think the new ones are the pastel ones. So anyway, go on their website. Um, these the large posters are for posting them up in your room, and then these are the smaller flashcards. And with the flashcards, the stories are on the back of them, so you can kind of sit there and read them to your kids. Um, do you need both? No, but I would get both. Um, if you're like a small group teacher or you just work with kids small group, I would just really, you only need these. Um, and then these are more just for like classroom display. These are more for like flashcards just to have on hand in front of the kids or you're doing a small group or maybe you want to post them somewhere for an extra reference. Maybe you're focusing on one particular skill. Um, so yeah, secret stories. Absolutely love them. I can't rave enough about them. They're amazing um they're amazing they're amazing they're amazing because it like revolutionizes teaching when you when you when you think of it as how kids they're babies how they learn they need something fun and exciting and engaging something that their brain can remember and then it translates into these into what would have been a complex skill of decoding or encoding when they're trying to write and it just makes that you it just makes it easy and you're you're just going to be so shocked when you see kids spelling words like caution because they know that au says aw and they know the story ti and shun right 
and you'll have six-year-olds writing a paper, writing the word caution or reading the word caution or vacation. Why? Because they have access. All right. So anyway, next, um, high frequency words, a resource that I use for high frequency words and actually secret stories has a resource for high, high frequency words too. Um, which I highly recommend. They also have digital stickers, which you, which I would which I use. I like I like overuse it. But um and I think I I've, I've been contemplating whether I want to use um the secret stories for the high frequency words because they all play it's all just the code and it's just placing those images inside of the words. Um and then but this is another fun thing to use. It's the I words. Um, and it's basically just their high frequency words with another graph, oh, with another graphic on it. Sorry, I got a, a notification on my phone. I don't know if it like cut out the sound or not, but it has a graphic to it, which helps kids remember and also like emotion. So, I mean, it's kind of a similar concept to secret stories using a visual clue. Um, you know, I know there can be some pushback with this as far as like, getting kids to like memorize words instead of having them phonetically decode them because most of the high frequency words are decodable. Um, there's only a few of them that, that don't follow the rules, right? Um, but so, yeah, I'm just contemplating. Kind of, I expose my kids to both. So like, for example, I'll show them Like the word two is a word that would be in jail because you, you just can't sound this out. And this doesn't follow any type of phonetic code. TW is supposed to say tw. But um, so like, for example, okay. Like, for example, the word down. Let's say I use this image. But then I would also go back and I, I'll say, do we see any secrets? And this is when I would use the secret stories digital stickers. It's like a Google Slides, like digital sticker of each a uh, phonetic phoneme um of each yeah phonic skill vowel pattern whatever but it's like a graphic version that you can move and manipulate and do what you want with to create what you want and so i might put this on a slide and then put the secret story ow right here about how ow and ou they like to play fight but they play too rough and they get hurt and they say ow right so i might put the secret story sticker here and have them decode it D out mm, just so that they can understand oh these words have some secrets in them oh these words are um phonetically decodable right but i'm just using another fun way to teach it right the word want right just little cute images to get students to ultimately memorize the word right some people hate to say it because they, they don't need to memorize it because they can decode it that is true that is true. But, I mean, if if you also happen to simply memorize it, I don't think there's no harm in that either. If you know how to decode phonetically as well. So, let's make our lives easier, you know. And, you know. So, I like I words. Um, I, these really help my students. Even my, um, like, diverse learners or students who learn better visually, they're able to get these words using using this, right? So, and they help when they see it in books, they, they know it. Some of them do struggle sometimes and that's where the pushback is as far as like memorizing words, right? So when they see some of them, not all of them, but there are a few who maybe they see this word in a book and they're not able to decode, read it because this is not there. Haha, <laughs> this is not there. But when they see this, they know it's the word there because they've gotten so accustomed to this. So that's why I don't want it to turn into a crutch which is why I understand there could be some pushback about that. Um, but that's why I'm very intentional. I'm going to be even more intentional this year with high frequency words and just making sure that um, I, I teach them how to also decode it using the secret stories. I might just use the secret stories, high frequency words, um, and then maybe use this to, for like small groups or for students who are still struggling or just need a different method or a different mode of learning um so but i still recommend i words and they have two sets 
So, yeah. And on the back, it tells you like what to say in the motion. So like for there, you would say, there is the island. And then the motion says, look out into the distance and pretend to point at something. So yeah, I just, they have a digital version too. So you could just do them as slides and click through them or you can fl flip through them as a teacher, whatever you so choose. All right, next, um, phonics and yeah, phonics, my phonics curriculum that I like to use. So a lot of people were asking me what I use. Um, our school uses CKLA, which I also use that too. Um, up until a certain point and then I start to use somebody actually put it in my comments in one of my last videos I use Tara West's um, Guided phonics and beyond curriculum, which I actually have here in my Google Drive. I don't even have all the units There's I think there's six. I have four in here, but the first unit is just teaching students the alphabet I don't use this one. I use CKLA because I like how CKLA um, teaches them their sounds while simultaneously teaching them how to read. This kind of just teaches them the sounds individually. Um, but I start with their unit too. Again, this is Guided Phonics and Beyond Science of Reading by Tara West. And I kind of just customize this curriculum. So here they give you, the, excuse me, the lesson plan and they map out like the scope and sequence. Um, and what I like about this is that it comes with decodable. So it gives you the lesson plan. Um, and just me personally, I don't follow this to a T. I'm, I just take and pull um, what I want to use from it. What I love about the curriculum is really that each lesson comes with a decodable. Um, so yeah, we use these. I print these off for each student and we get dry erase. Uh, I laminate it in dry erase paper and we map our words. But honestly, you could create your own, you know, word mapping sheets. It's just boxes. Um, what else? Yeah, so we review the sounds, review the high frequency words. They have a lot of different printables, a lot of like homework practice and stuff. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is like small group resources. But here's what I wanted to show you, the decodable. So there's a decodable for every lesson and you just print these off, fold them up and give them to the students. And that's what I really love about it, that that hands on practice, having a new decodable every other day. Uh, that's that's really mostly what I use this resource for. Um, so, yeah, the decodables. The decodables is really what sold me on this. And also just the extra practice worksheets. We do these every day um whatever they offer i try i like to use their worksheets they do have good activities like look at this shindig cat nap kitten my kindergartners were reading this um and you know just having consistent homework predictable not changing every day that's what i do like about it so i would like send these home for homework and then we do this one for classwork on monday then we might do this one on Tuesday, this one on Wednesday. So just having predictability as far as whatever skill we're working on, um, that really helped them. And then again, having a decodable for every lesson. Again, this is called Guided Phonics and Beyond by Tara West. Her unit one is just going through the alphabet sounds. Her unit two is CVC words. So kind of CVC words, reviewing those sounds, but also incorporating decodables as well as teaching them a few high frequency words so they're that so that they're able to read the book so like the word the like i am um her unit four uh oh i skipped unit three her unit three goes into like digraphs and blends which my students by the time we get to this unit they already they already know about ch and th and um They already know about ch and th and blends because of the secret stories they 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 learn it they've learned it already so this kind of just solidifies what they've already been exposed to through secret stories which is great and then unit four we ended the school year on unit four uh it goes into long vowel so silent e which my students already know because that's a secret story mommy e she tells the vowels to say their name so again just solidifying what they already knew um next year my goal is going to be to get to unit four with them i'm sorry unit five with them 
because uni5 is just like ending blends like the word went anti nt or help lp lp so just words like that um which my higher students are able to decode anyway because once you teach them how to blend sounds they can pretty much get that but some students need that extra practice you know those and those and t and d endings can be kind of tricky so highly recommend tara west's guided phonics and beyond she also has a bunch of other amazing resources that i highly recommend so yep those are my top products that i use in my classroom um and I highly recommend them to you. Again, get purchasing these products. It's not going to guarantee success. Like I stated at the beginning of this video, it's all about the skill of the teacher. Um, so, yes. Thank you all for watching this video. If this video was helpful to you, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you would like to i will be posting some more videos for the upcoming school year and yeah thank you for watching bye, -bye.